with the American Invitational Math exam coming up, we're all practicing and studying last minute. So in this video, I present to you top eight formulas to memorize right before the AME. Additional resources will be linked to in the description. All right, first up is the cubic formula. Now this isn't the super ugly one that works for general cubics. This only works for cubics of the form x cubed plus px plus q equals zero. Notice it has no quadratic term. This is also known as Cardano's formula. The formula tells us that if p and q are real numbers and 4p squared plus 27q cubed is greater than or equal to zero, then the real root is equal to cube root of negative q over two plus square root of q squared on four plus p cubed over 27 plus the cube root of negative q over two minus square root of q squared on four plus p cubed on 27. Now this might look kind of ugly, but it works out if you know that the roots of the cubic are nice numbers. Furthermore, we can reduce any cubic to this form just by doing some variable substitutions to get rid of the quadratic term. Next up are Newton sums. If we have a polynomial of the form a n x to the n plus a n minus one x to the n minus one, etc., plus a one x plus a zero, then we know there are n roots by the fundamental theorem of algebra, counting with multiplicity, x1, x2, and so on up to x to the n. Newton sums give us a nice way to find power sums. The kth power sum is described as the sum of all the roots taken to the kth power. So for instance, p0 would be n, and p1 would just be the sum of all the roots. Now Newton sums are really a list of equations. The first equation goes a n times p1, plus a n minus one equals zero. The second one goes a n times p2, plus a n minus one times p1, plus two times a n minus two equals zero. And the third equation goes a n times p3, plus a n minus one times p2, plus a n minus two times p1, plus three times a n minus three equals zero. These equations continue down in the same pattern as the first three. Now these are nice because, for example, using just p1, p2, and p3, we can find p4 in the next equation. These are often useful when we have algebra problems involving the roots of a polynomial and lots of viettas as well. Number three are the sum to product and product to sum trig identities. Now these aren't worth remembering, they're usually most helpful when you remember how to derive them. I'll give one example here. I'll give one example here. If we have sine alpha plus beta minus sine alpha minus beta, then we have expanding sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha sine beta minus sine alpha cosine beta plus cosine alpha. These are just the usual trig addition identities. Then what we get is a bunch of stuff cancels out and we are left with two cosine alpha sine beta. That's how you go from a difference of signs to a product of cosine and sine. If you work through all possibilities just by working through the sines and the cosines and the negatives and the positives, then you end up with all these sum to product and product to sum identities. Next up is the derangement formula. It tells us the number of ways to derange n objects. What this means is that if we have n objects, we want to find the number of ways to shuffle them around such that none of them end up in their original location. For instance, in the example 1, 2, 3, a derangement could be 3, 1, 2. The derangement formula tells us that the number of ways to do this is equal to n factorial times 1 over 0 factorial minus 1 over 1 factorial plus 1 over 2 factorial minus 1 over 3 factorial and so on plus negative 1 to the n times 1 over n factorial. Written more concisely, this is equal to n factorial times the sum of negative 1 to the k over k factorial for k ranging from 0 to n. Number five is lifting the exponent. This is a lemma concerned with the VP function. And no, this is not really a V, it's some Greek letter, uh, but I don't know what it is, so I'm just gonna say VP. This is equal to the number of times that the prime P divides into N. For instance, V2 of 1024 is equal to 10, V3 of 18 is equal to two, and V5 of 100 is equal to two. It tells us that if P is odd, specifically an odd prime, then vp of x minus y, and x and y are integers such that p does not divide x and p does not divide y, but p divides x minus y, then vp of x to the n minus y to the n for a particular integer n is equal to vp of x minus y plus vp of n. Furthermore, if n is odd, then we can simply take y to be negative y to get vp of x n plus y to the n is equal to vp of x plus y plus vp of n. 
Now you might be wondering what happens when p equals 2. This is a special case. We need x and y to be odd. It tells us that v2 of x to the n minus y to the n is equal to v2 of x minus y plus v2 of x plus y plus v2 of n minus 1. And that is lifting the exponent. Now let's get into some geometry. The ratio lemma tells us that in a triangle ABC, if there's a point D on segment BC, and we draw the segment AD, then BD over CD is equal to AB over AC times sine of angle BAD over sine of angle CAD. These are the segments involved, and these are the angles involved. Now, a special case of this is the angle bisector theorem, where sine of BAD is equal to sine of CAD because AD is an angle bisector. And that just tells us that the ratio of BD to DC is equal to the ratio of AB to AC. Now let's get into some area formulas. First, you should be familiar with Heron's formula, which tells us that in a triangle ABC, if these are the side lengths and S is equal to the semi-perimeter of the triangle or half the perimeter, then area is equal to S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C all square rooted. Now Brahmagupta's formula tells us a similar thing but for cyclic quadrilaterals. So if you have a quadrilateral inscribed in a circle over here called ABCD, and its side lengths are A, B, C, and D. And similarly to the triangle, we define S is equal to the semi-perimeter of the quadrilateral. Then we know that the area of the quadrilateral is equal to the square root of S minus A times S minus B times S minus C times S minus D. And now we have Stewart's theorem, which tells us the length of a Chavian in a triangle. Suppose we have a triangle ABC with point D on segment BC. Let AC equals B, AB equals C. BD equals M, CD equals N, AD equals D, and BC equals A. Then there's a quite nice way to remember Stewart's theorem, which is a man and his dad put a bomb in the sink. And that's it for this video. Again, links to additional resources will be in the description below. Good luck on the Amy, and thanks for watching.